Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to your Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 13 review. And I gotta say, this episode um, was pretty unique and enjoyable, and um, I, I, I like this episode for what it did. I liked how they focused more on Maggie, um, and, you know, because Maggie's also a character that we really haven't got to know really that deeply, really at all in Walking Dead. You know, um, it would be nice to have more stories. We did have a couple of episodes, but they weren't really that good where she was going out and, you know, looking for Glenn briefly. But we never really get to know, you know, so like deep into um, into her psyche. Um, you know, we get to see the tough side of Maggie. We get to see Carol. Um, basically, this episode is both Carol and Maggie are being um, held captive by Negan's men, the saviors. And um, Carol is playing that she is weak and scared. And she's waiting for her moment to strike. And boy, when it does come, this everything kind of erupts into total violence. And th this episode, I love the pacing of it. Um, I I really have to say, like, I really enjoyed this episode a lot, um, even more so than um, than last week's. I gotta say, the just the whole entire episode put together, um, it just overall was better. Um, superior to me. I, 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 I just, I like the dialogue. I really do. And I, I like the idea. I like stories like that where they can stay in one place, you know, for an extended period of time and it doesn't get boring. Um, you know, and, and I like, you know, hearing a little bit from Paula and her perspective on life and, you know, how she used to be, um, you know, it, it you know, before the outbreak, and so I, I like hearing that, like, before the apocalypse, I like to hear about what characters did prior to that, um, you know, and, and it's interesting, you know, um, actually, that is more interesting than Fear the Walking Dead, um, you know, actually, that's kind of interesting, because I wanted to talk a little bit about Fear the Walking Dead, I am going to be watching and reviewing, um, because yeah, I don't, I think I reviewed the first episode of Fear the Walking Dead, but I, I praised it, and I was praising it to, to friends and family and, and, and shit. I was saying that I did enjoy it, but now that like I've had a couple, been a couple of months removed from Fear the Walking Dead, I really don't miss it. I have to say, like I wasn't really too enthralled by Fear the Walking Dead. Um, it just it wasn't interesting to me to see, you know, pre-major apocalypse outbreak. It's just the characters were not grabbing me. And a lot, you know, and, and I mentioned this to a couple of people, and they said to me, you know, you got to give it a chance. It starts out slow, you know, or getting to know the characters. I don't really care for the characters. I really don't. Um, you know, I was kind of making excuses at first because I'm like, oh, you know, it's, the first of its kind, you really can't compare it to anything um, besides The Walking Dead itself, which is going to have inevitable comparisons, but I had no choice. The first episode I saw of Walking Dead, I was hooked on the show. Because why? Because Rick Grimes just, you know, reeled me in, and I wanted to see where this crazy adventure was going to take him. Um, and and uh, there was just something about, I, I cling to Andrew Lincoln. Just something about it, you know, his presence. And the guy does have unbelievable presence, and that's the problem. The actors they picked had no presence in Fear of the Walking Dead. So pretty much what I'm getting at is, I enjoy hearing characters talk more about their past experiences than actually seeing it firsthand. You know, it's just um, I don't know. I think it's handled better. Just I, to me, there was a lot of fluff in Fear of the Walking Dead. There truly was, you know, it took them six episodes and it kind of felt like that season took an eternity. A lot of those episodes felt like two hours, but they were single out. They just moved at such a slow pace and, you know, there was just, uh, I think it left a lot to be desired. But the thing is, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, season two and seeing if they're 
uh, are some improvements made, perhaps? You know, one can only know by watching and, and finding out for themselves. But, um, yeah, this episode, it was really good. Um, I, I really liked where they started the episode from um, and, and where they ended it and just everything in between. I, you know, I'm just a really big fan of the Carol character. I, I just in, enjoy her. In, her. It's just so amusing watching her. She pretending to be like um, a cowardly Christian woman. You know, she she's holding the, the rosary beads with the cross and she's you know, just kind of acting like scared and pathetic and, you know, mercy, uh, you know, and, and, and kind of like begging for mercy. And and then you see what Carol could do once again, you know, just bursting into action. And, uh, you know, I, I just like it. Good pacing, good little uh, side story that I enjoyed. You know, I always see that's the one thing about The Walking Dead, what I enjoy. And it's just how they lead into things. Uh, you know, this is why, uh, as I've said, when people think that they're going to give up on The walk, and this has been jokes, they've wrote memes about this, some episodes of The Walking Dead could be so goddamn boring, and then by the end of it, they've made you a fan again. I, I mean, I don't know why they, you know, sometimes they do this, but... I sometimes think that they, they, they kind of have more episodes than what they really need for a season, and they kind of just add in a lot of filler. And, you know, they kind of add in some little Easter eggs and, you know, little things to kind of entertain the fans, but really they don't need as much time as they get. I, I mean, that that is coming from a major Walking Dead fan, um, but I think they get more time than they really need to tell a story. It's like... It's like a lot of movies, you know, it really is, they, like, they get way too much time, not enough story, not enough meat to fill up the empanada of the season, I don't know, you know, uh, I'm trying to go for some type of fucking metaphor or analogy there, uh, but there's just not enough meat filling to justify all of that season, um, but like last episode, you know, you had a really exciting, cl like climax leading up to that climax. Like I said, it was a little bit slow, a little bit tedious. Not terrible, not the worst I've ever seen, but it was a bit plotting. But they made you, you know, a Walking Dead fan with that great finale. And then they switch, you know, perspectives. You know, they switch the groups, and that's. What gives Walking Dead its, it, you know, its unlimited um, longevity. Like, they can keep going with this because it, it's exciting and I like that. I like when we get little things. You know, what I really want to see more of is I want to... This kind of story, it, it wasn't really a solo story. But I want to see more of kind of like what they did with Beth. Like, Beth, that was very interesting what they did with Beth, um, with Herschel's daughter, when, when, they, when they broke off from the main group, you had a really good emotionally, you know, dramatically charged solo story there with Beth, you know, and Beth was like a character where you were like, she's getting her own episode, she's not even that interesting, and then as you got to know her, I don't know about everybody else, but I kind of enjoyed the Beth character. And, um, you know, I like seeing that kind of when they dwindle down the amount of characters so it doesn't feel that crowded. And, that you know, that's one thing. The Walking Dead never seems crowded. As many characters as they do have, especially in Alexandria, you do notice that everybody gets just enough attention that they deserve. You know, even some of the minor characters. Now... Sometimes it does piss me off when they forget about characters for a long time, like Daryl. Well, like, you know, last season, like the last half of, of season five, I felt like Daryl was non-existent. Now we're getting plenty of Daryl. Um, you know, in last season, I mean, last episode, we got plenty of them. And, you know, the thing is, like, um, like just like they cooled down on Carol, and now we got 
oodles of Carol in this episode. So, I you know, I kind of see what it is. It's like, they kind of ease off on one character, kind of when they have an interesting, you know, allure to them, sort of like Daryl and, and, and Carol, you know, they, they have that interesting allure to them, where they're not Rick Grimes, they're not the main character, they're not the centerpiece, um, but you notice their absence. When they're gone, I always notice, right away, like, hey, Daryl's not been in this episode, or he hasn't been in a lot of the episodes this season. Or I noticed they've been cooling off on Carol's appearances and her doings in the show. And so when you could really notice when the character is missing, that's when you know you've connected with a character. That's when you know that, you know, that character really means something to the show and really means something to you as a, as a viewer. Um, and, and that's what really truly makes the show great. And I was really sitting there after this episode, I was kind of reflecting on this. I was like, you know... Um, uh, when you can just have two characters, uh, when this show is mainly about, you know, a group working together for, you know, com a common goal, um, you know, surviving, then they could break it off and it could be just as interesting, if not even more interesting, um, you know, because I'm always, a, I'm a big fan of character development. You know, if you're watching this show solely for action, you're going to be severely disappointed. If you have a friend that's, you know, just likes action and they don't, you know, care much for story. They're the Michael Bay movie goer type. I wouldn't say to recommend this show to them. But, you know, uh, for me, I love character development. I always have, I like charismatic characters. I like individuals that, you know, appear as leaders that don't seem weak. And, you know, characters that are just inspiring. They're emotional. You can get connected to them um, on an emotional level. And that's what I get with this show. So even though I complain a lot of times um, in these reviews about The Walking Dead, what are they doing? Is there a fucking meaning to this? And they always shut me up in the end. And what I always love, you know, if like I can complain and then I instantly remember that even though I'm complaining, I still love this show. And that's what I got from an episode like this. Uh, so, guys, I'll see you for episode 14.